Oh dari tadi mau datang. Dia nelpon. Siapa aja situ udah kayak gitu kan. Udah sini lah kok aku bilang. Yo. Free West Papua. Bang Alo. The Deal House. Come on. Yo. Free West Papua. Free West Papua. Free West Papua. Rambut keriting, hitam kulitku Apakah penting, apakah bentuk tubuh buatku terasing Di matamu, keadilan berlandaskan suku Kalian datang ke tanah ini bawa pertikaian Pembenaran tentang pemerataan pembangunan Apa guna persatuan jika dipaksakan Seakan kita orang setengah binatang Dan kalian setengah Tuhan Hutan kami kalian sulap jadi tambang Nyawa kami ditentukan selongsong senapan Hari ini harkat hidup kami Takkan boleh lagi ditakar oleh uang Kami yang tentukan nasib hidup kami pilihkan Dan kami akan pilih kebebasan Riwes Papua Papua Satu kepalan buat Pace Hari ini atau tidak sama sekali Do you want? Do you want? Would you like to um, pass through any any questions that have been raised to the two panelists for us, please? Okay. Um, we have one here from the Q and A um of Zoom, but uh, although Tony already answered it, but maybe he would like to elaborate more. So the question is, why would self rule in West Papua uh, not work? What is the reason and strategies that East Timor used to get its independence? Would that also work in West Papua? And I might as well uh, mention another question that we got, um, we received through message. Um, how will self-determination um, help address the ongoing issue of racism that is rampant now in West Papua? So yeah, we have those two questions so far. Uh, maybe we can have TJ first to elaborate on what he's already answered in Zoom and then uh, maybe Septi, if you would like to add. Yeah, what I meant uh, in the PowerPoint presentation is you can have the option of self-rule within an Indonesian government, which means to say it will be a self-ruling uh, territory of West Papua. But the concept of West uh, self-rule can only be accepted if you have a progressive uh, Indonesian government or a government that is not controlled by imperialism. So in the same case of East Timor, the notion of self-rule for East Timor is not acceptable because the government itself uh, actually uh, went into an armed you know, uh, oppression of the East Timorese, which means to say uh, self-rule within the framework of Indonesia is not acceptable. Therefore, the only recourse is secession and independence. So there's, uh, I use the term self-rule in the context of the Indonesian state. Can there be a self-rule within the Indonesian state? Well, they're trying to create a, you know, a, a fake self-rule, but it is controlled by the military of Indonesia. How will self-determination help address the racism that is one of the most rampant issues now in Papua. And I, there are two other questions who just came in addressed to Tony, so might as well uh, read it. 
uh, the Pancasila or the Foundation Philosophy Theory of Nationhood narrative is played again by Jokowi. The relocation of Jakarta to Kalimantan will see a new wave. The capital, the capital of Indonesia, uh, will be relocated to Kalimantan. Will see a new wave of militarism against indigenous peoples there. Uh, so he's asking for your view. Uh, would you like to answer that first, or we'll go through all of the questions? Yeah, I know. I'll go to the first one. Um, I think um, the question of racism is, in a sense, uh, very painful for the West Papuans. But uh, it's an issue that is uh, easily used by the ruling class as a way to further marginalize a population. Uh, I remember in the Philippines, the question of racism uh, among the, uh, the Ita and the other uh, uh, Melanesian uh, people in the Philippines is, is quite, uh, you know, it's being used by the elite. And, but uh, there has been, because of the strength of the progressive movement, it has actually eroded that racism. So the question of racism is also a question that um, a progressive Indonesian movement should fight. And at the same time, also understand that racism is uh, a tool by the imperialists and the elite to isolate and marginalize the, the West Papuans. Which means to say the self-determination of a people who are now being marginalized further is further eroded by ra racism. Racism is used to weaken the self-determination of people in the question of culture, the question of social practices, of economy, and therefore ra racism is a uh, systemic. But I would like to emphasize that for the West Papuan people, uh, while ra racism is there, they should understand that uh, racism is a cultural aspect and that they should pay to the roots of the oppression and exploitation of, the, of West Papua and their people and, and discover that behind all that ra racism, is the the you know the ruling class and the state the the military the the landlords who want to take over west papua uh, whether in the plant plantations the the farms the logging and so on and therefore uh in a sense ra racism is a secondary issue the bigger issue is to fight uh, you know, the uh, economic and fascist that is in the case of uh, this, this new narrative in Kalimantan, indeed, uh, for a few decades already, there was even uh, the, the, um, the Suharto government has actually been using this notion of uh, depopulating Jakarta, which is so overpopulated, and sending settlers to uh, Kalimantan as well as to, uh, to uh, West Papua. And of course, that is very unfair to the, to the tribes and the people of Kalimantan. And while we understand um, the the, the interests and the concerns of the pool, the people who have no land in Jakarta, and therefore they are settled into Kalimantan. Uh, uh, the, the government of Indonesia is using this popula population control actually to take over the land of the indigenous of uh, Kalimantan. Um, that issue, again, is an expression of how U.S. imperialism and its puppet government is trying to uh, address the overpopulation of Jakarta and the transfer of that capital, but it will also intensify the exploitation of the resources of Kalimantan. And this is against the interests 
of the indigenous people and the other people who have already resided in Kalimantan. And, and everyone, both Malay and indige uh, indigenous in Kalimantan, have a right to protest these efforts, uh, assert their own self-determination for the island of Kalimantan. Um, we'll go to step the first. So, and this one is related to the special autonomy. So given that Jakarta is currently negotiating another round of the special autonomy, which was <coughs> in 2001, what is the response of West Papuans and how are they delivering their message in relation to their response? Um, we have Sepi here to answer, but we also have another Papuan youth uh, present in the panelists who can help. So Ruth and Sepi, we can answer this first before we go to the last question, again addressed to Tony. Thank you. Um, about autonomy law in West Papua, in West Papua, we want freedom. We want to uh, uh, independent, uh, but autonomy law uh, came just like a candy for West Papua. Uh, now, um, autonomy law will be uh, finished in 2021. 2021. It's, we just have a uh, one or one year or two year, two year till this autonomy law will finish from Indonesia, and we will watch. What Indonesia uh, will uh, uh, work to us to, to cancel our defense or our uh, movement to get our freedoms. Uh, I think uh, our panelists uh, already told about our history in, in this session. So uh, we thanks for all of you, for Kevin and, uh, and other panelists uh, to speak about our, our issues in, here in this webinar. Uh, now uh, the movement in West Papua, the social movement in West Papua, the, some organization uh, uh, from UL, ULWP and with uh, civil movements uh, try to make a peti petitions uh, to deliver the issues uh, to get the uh, to get the aspiration from uh, West Papuans uh, what uh, what we want. So the petition is in online. Uh, and we deliver to uh, uh, people, to so students uh, uh, in the fields, uh, uh, everybody in West Papua to, to, to give the answer what we want uh, when the autonomy law uh, is over in West Papua. Are we want to freedom? Are we want to a referendum? And the petition is uh, our way to choose because uh, based on the history, we are not involved in the in the referendum process uh, by Indonesia and in in, in UNTIA process uh, the integration. So, with autonomy law, uh, of course, it's uh, I think it's a fail in West Papua. You can see it in in the field how West Papua live, how the racisms uh, raised in uh, 2019, and the 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 economy the the facility of uh, healthcare and other in West Papua is very low. Till now, maybe you can see in our presentation, in the safety presentations, uh, that uh, we are in the very low, uh, very low losses in developing in West Papua, in, in, in Indonesia. I think uh, we fight against the oligarchy or uh, against capitalists against neoliberalism in Indonesia, but for West Papua, it's double, you know, it's double. Because after Netherlands uh, comes Japan and now, uh, and now Indonesia. So, autonomy law is not answer our problems. That's the reason why we want, we have to fight for our self-determination, not just in politics, but in social and economic rights. I think that's all. Thank you, Ruth. Before Septi adds uh, his response, uh, I'm going to add another question addressed to our Papuan panelists. Uh, what is the position of the majority of the new settlers or the migrants from other parts of Indonesia to the struggle for self-determination of West Papua? So are they uh, supporting this uh, struggle, uh, especially now with the 
uh, current uh, special autonomy campaign happening? What what is their stand? Okay, uh, for the autonomy process, uh, I will speak in English because uh, uh, people uh, outside Papua needs to know. Once Papuans know about our issues, but other peoples out there uh, have to have to hear from us. So I, if my English is not better, I will speak in English. Um, the process of autonomy law in West Papua is not uh, involved a lot of uh, all uh, uh, people from grassroots you know the grassroots is 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 try to uh, tell the when timor leste uh, get them independent and the reformation is running in in indonesia west papua also raised with with our problems in all sectors and we know our history and we want to independence but in the process uh, the mass uh, uh, people want to freedom, and the intellectual of Papua, and some intellectual of Papua, maybe the academic, the academicians, uh, the lecturers, uh, the the politicians, and others, uh, uh, with some Indonesians, uh, intellectual or, or or Indonesian, I mean Indonesia, uh, they try to design this autonomy law. So if you ask about we agree or not agree, when the Indonesian government or when the politicians or uh, or anybody asks about West Papuans uh, wants nothing. So I think what's in the grassroots now was the Papuans, the, the engineers Papuans, every day facing their problems the police the military uh the land grabbing uh economic educations health care every day so we are not uh we are not in the situation that we are okay so the the question about autonomy law or we want or not people just thinking about how they can live tomorrow how they can get uh, uh, pay uh, money, money to pay their, uh, their their children to get the education, to get to get to go to the hospital when the hospital is not very well, not uh, not not very well in uh, receive us or not not welcome to some of us, like in the highland of West Papua, like uh, the refugees in the in in Duga now, and uh, uh, so. The, the question about autonomy law we want or not, I think uh, we just uh, want to live in the peace. We want to live in peace. And we, without military, without, without uh, violence, maybe it's very utopist, but, but when we try to get that, we will. So self-determination, referendum, is the way, it's one of the way, I mean. We have to move from ourselves uh, to organize, recognize ourselves and, 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 and move together. And, and this webinar is one of that. So now uh, people just try to deliver the issue about autonomy law in the petitions. And, and, in the, and, and now West Papuan students everywhere, we are educated now, and we know what our history, and we move for that. Uh, we educate our 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 peoples to know uh, what not not to intervene interventions what they think what they want, but to tell them the real the, the reality of this Papua now the fact of this Papua now. Maybe, who knows tomorrow? Maybe we get our freedom with referendum with uh, autonomy law or other way we could but now autonomy law is not good it's not it's not good for us and uh, engineers papuans know about that but with indonesian approach with uh with like the racism in 2019 people will, people will fear about 
And people will fear to speak about our rights. We live in fear because every day we're facing the military. Yeah, I would like to add a bit. Uh, precisely the question of safe self rule or this notion of an autonomy law is something that is going to be very difficult uh, to realize because you have uh, a puppet government with the military and an imperialist interest. These three, this, this triad that is ensuring that you will not re get real autonomy, no real self-rule for West Papua means that they should fight for independence. Uh, there is just one question that was just typed here in Zoom. So for, for the benefit of our viewers in Facebook, we'll just uh, read it. Um, do you think one of the questions was, do you think it would be helpful in explaining to the Indonesian people why two struggles, the struggles of Indonesians and West Papuans are linked, but that the struggle of West Papuans has the extra element that they are victims of Indonesian colonialism or sub-imperialism? So Tony's response to that was that Indonesia is acting as a surrogate of U.S. and Australian imperialists, and thus the colonial power is U.S. and Australia and Indonesia is the puppet implementing the colonialism of these uh, two bigger powers. So, yeah. Yeah, I would like to add to that because <laughs> I, I would invite for for the uh, West Papuan youth and everyone, all of West Papuan, to study the role of imperialism of U.S. and Australia in this whole affair. The, the, the Indonesian puppet government is acting as just a running dog of imperialism. So the imperialist, uh, the, the colonialism that West Papuan people feel is being implemented upon them harshly by the military, by the Indonesian uh, state. But they should not forget that the Indonesian state, the government of Jokowi and the military are just uh, doing, uh, just implementing that colonial rule, but it is for the interest for free port Mark Moran, the Indonesian, uh, sorry, the U.S. and Australian uh, exploiters who are behind it all. Well, I'd just like to say, Tony, I agree with you 100%, but we're not an imperialist, we're a sub-imperialist power. <laughs> we're sub yeah. to the U.S. as well. And all major Australian companies are majority owned by the U.S. And the U.S. tells us, well, the Australian government what they want to do, how to vote in the U.N. And, and we act as their running dogs is true. But it's not in the interest of Australian people either. So I'd like to say that we should join in not only the Indonesian and West Papuan people, but the Australian people as well, that we can do things much better than what it's doing now. We could make our countries much better, much fairer and without oppression. But this is a part, that's the, what the aim of this webinar is. It's to bring people together who have got good causes, who want a decent life for the people of West Papua, for the people of Indonesia and for the people of Australia too.